Okay, so I'm just going to try shooting this again because it will make more sense. I'm going to just show you my materials first. Alright, now this is for watercolor and I know a lot of people like to buy expensive brushes but I do not so I buy cheap sets of brushes and I try to get um, ones with a lot of flats in them because I like using flats you can see most of these are flats if they're not like little rounds all of these little rounds I use for um, doing my line work I do ink line work I use India ink this bottle of black cat waterproof India ink I got at Blick and it's like a pint it says and I've had it for about three years and it's only about down to there but I also have another little container that has a whole bunch of this stuff in it because I poured it in there and that's what I'd like to do my my ink outlines with that's how I do my paintings I'll do my drawing on tracing paper and then I'll take my transfer paper here this is wax free serral and uh, transfer paper and it's kind of like a graphite it's the graphite kind so you take this stuff and there's a dark side and there's a light side you can see the difference and you put the dark side down and then you put your tracing paper with your sketch or whatever on top of that put that on top of your your drawing paper or your watercolor paper like this this is watercolor paper and then you go over that you know how carbon paper works, I assume. You go over it and then uh, whatever it is you just drew on top of imprints onto your surface. So that'll give you a clean sketch or clean lines to go over on your watercolor paper like that junk. Um, let's see, what else? So that's, that's typically what I do. And then I ink my lines with this stuff. And because it's waterproof, got to make sure it's waterproof, I can uh, go over that with my watercolors, like here. I just want to go over what, what else is in my uh, little thing here first. This is actually not intended for brushes, I th I'm pretty sure. It's actually intended for pencils, and it's just a little pencil folio dealy. And in here I have all these brushes, all my flats, and I have an eraser. See, that's a kneaded eraser, very important. You don't need to have a kneaded eraser, but I like them because they clean themselves. And if you've ever used a kneaded eraser, you know what I'm talking about. I'm trying not to cut the crap out of myself by putting this on here. Okay, and I also have two wash brushes. This one's a three-quarter inch wash brush. This one's a one-inch wash brush. Uh, and then I have an assortment of pencils in here. Some of them are HB. There's this one's a 4B, um, <clears throat> and that I use for drawing. You know how it works. Draw a line. So I'll have my line drawn in pencil or with my transfer paper, which is just like pencil. It erases just the way that a pencil would with this or this eraser right here. <clears throat> And then I do my ink lines over that. Okay. Before I go and do any of my lines, I make sure that I tape some margins off of my paper. Usually I like to have a one inch margin. But, like, for example, I don't want to show you this because it's a sneak preview dealio. So I have the margins taped off like this. I'll just show you all the way around. These aren't one inch margins because this is a really small watercolor block. I always use watercolor blocks. That's my preference. Okay, this one is seven by ten and a quarter. Usually I use the um, bigger ones like this, this one here. This one is twelve by 16 roughly and that's pretty big and then I have a bigger one too that's about 20 by 16 or something crazy like that um but I don't use that one often most often I use that green one the difference between the green color and the orange one is the green one's a cold press 
This is a cold press arches. 140 pounds is better than 90 pounds. 90 pounds is really thin and it kind of sucks. It feels really flimsy, so I like 140 pounds better. That's a heavier weight paper. It feels nicer. It absorbs better. It's kind of got more substance to it, like this. Um, and that's why I like that. So this here is my original palette. As you can see, it's gotten a lot of use. All of these are watercolors. All right, and if you don't know about tube colors, if you're only familiar with Crayola pans, for example, this is a tube of watercolor. So what you do is you open this up, and then you squeeze out as much as you want. Don't be afraid to squeeze it out. It's not going to get wasted. Um, the only way you can waste it is if you wash it off and don't use it. This is probably going to run into a couple of parts of this video, so pay attention to that. Um, so anyway, you let it, you, you squeeze out your color, you let it dry out overnight, and it'll get like this. You can touch it. Some of them are sticky. Alizarin Crimson always stays sticky. For example, that's this color. Um, others dry up really hard. Like this one's Payne's Gray. This one's pretty rock solid. Well, it's not rock solid per se, but it's pretty solid. You're not going to get gunk on your finger. But some of them that look, if they look shiny, then they're probably still sticky, but they're dry and you can use them and they're fine. They're fine to use. So the way that you use this is just like the Crayola pan colors that you use when you're a little kid. You take your water. This is my brush. This is my probably my favorite one. And you pick whatever color. I'm going to use this one. This is raw. Or no, I always say raw. It's not raw. I never use raw. This is burnt sienna. So I've wet it. I've got some pigment on my brush. And there it is. It's right there. There's my pigment. It came alive again. Even the same the same thing goes for like all these dry colors here. Don't wash these away unless you need to make space to mix new colors. Because you can reactivate this. Just like this. See? This is all reactivated. Just with water. Nothing special. So that's why I like watercolors. You can use them over and over again pretty well. And um, they're not ever going to stop working. All right. And so that pretty, pretty much covers those materials. Um, another thing I like to keep a lot of around is I like to I always make sure I have a paper towel. I use it for blotting my ink brush. So like if I have one of these little tiny doodads, oops, I dropped one. If I have one of these little things, I stick it in my ink and then just to, to make sure I have, I don't have too much, I do like this. So that's all the spots here. Um, same thing goes with like watercolor. If I put down too much paint, then I can just dab at it like this and it'll come up. The thing about watercolor is and the thing about all paint is it lightens as it dries because some of the pigment evaporates with the water. So see that's kind of dark. This is kind of dark. So when it evaporates, when the water evaporates, it'll take some of that pigment with it so it'll dry a little lighter. Also with watercolor, you want to paint light to dark. Don't start out too dark. You want to do it in a series of washes. And in that way you're going to build up tones and shades and things. Okay. So that's that. And then I'm I'm going to um end this video. I'm going to start another one cuz I want to keep these YouTube acceptable 10 minutes. All right. So now I'm going to start part 2. Bye.